insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 98, Body Anxiety. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and beautiful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How was your week this week? It was... It was... Well, it was calm but busy. Calm but busy. Okay, well, I guess busy helps to make the week go by faster, right? I suppose so. Well, there's something to say about that. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about body anxiety. And one of the things that I tend to do is I go out and I look for different topics for us to, to talk about. And anxiety is one that always seems to come up with teens. Um, I mean, as a teen, do you go through a lot of anxiety about things? I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff I worry about, and in fact, I have the problem of finding something to worry about. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, but body anxiety happens to be a topic that's been coming up a lot lately on a lot of different websites. And I don't know if it's a byproduct of the whole stay-at-home thing. Uh, I know one of the things a lot of people have talked about is, you know, everyone's put a few extra pounds on since they've been stuck at home. Mm -hmm. So that might be driving some of the body anxiety. And some of it might be the fact that you're not interacting with peers and getting positive, you know, feedback from your peers about how you look. Um, all teens worry about how they look and, and, you know, how their body's developing and so forth. So without getting that, that feedback from your peers, good or bad, I guess, I think it might be driving the body anxiety a little bit. Mm. So today we're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about what is body anxiety, uh, some of the physical appearance concerns that teens have. Then we're going to talk some of the fashion considerations. Mm. As you get into your later teen years, what you wear becomes significant. Mm. Uh, we'll also talk about physical self-evaluation, combating social expectations, and then we'll finish up with how parents can help their teens combat body anxiety. But before we get into that, I would like to invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of the podcast listed as Insights into Teens anywhere you subscribe to your podcast. You can get video versions of the podcast and, in fact, all of our shows if you look up Insights into Things. I would also invite folks to give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, suggest any topics for us to discuss. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast, or you can go directly to our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Shall we get started? We shall. Commence showing. So what is body anxiety? Why don't you tell us what our definition of body anxiety is for today? Okay, so puberty during mid-adolescence, around the ages of 9 to 15, involves significant changes to, to teens' bodies. Uh, young people can feel anxious about bodily changes that they are that aren't in their control. There is often self. They are off. There's often self consciousness and worry about how their growing body is turning out. There is an increased need for physical for physical privacy. There is more time devoted to self inspect 
inspection and social preparation. There is more peer attention paid pay to personal appearance, both good and bad. Uh, there can be concerns about gender definition how, and how to express them. And all of these things can lead to body anxiety. So that's a pretty broad definition for what we're talking about here. <clears throat> but before we get too deep into it, let me ask you if any of these things are applicable to you. Uh, obviously, you, you've gone through and are going through puberty at this point in time, and you've seen the various changes that it's caused um, with your body, your grooming habits, your moods, and everything. Um, has that been a, something of concern for you since you started? You were around, what, 11 when, when you started with the changes? Actually, around nine. Around nine. So yeah. you were very early. So has that, has your, the way your body been developing as a result of that, is that something that's been a concern or a source of anxiety for you? I mean, when I first started going through this, I, it was kind of a big shock to me. Um, I actually found out my body was changing at school, and then when I went home to both you and mommy, I was kind of scared. I was scared what my body was going through, and I was scared that I was, well, I was kind of forming and I wasn't exact, I wasn't sure if this was normal or not. It was, I, I had talked a bit about puberty before, but not to an extent of the point of knowing what was going on when I went through it. So has it resulted in self-consciousness or anxiousness about how things are changing with your body where you've not been able to get the answers that you're looking for? I mean, I've been able to get the answers to all this, and we also had, um, we have also talked about it a couple of times on the podcast, and um, school does also kind of show us videos about puberty. Um, I think it started when I was in fourth grade. We watched a video about puberty since many of the uh, kids at that point were starting to go through puberty. So how about the need for physical privacy and more time devoted to understanding these changes that your body's going through? Do you feel as though that's a need for you? And do you feel like that need is being met at this time? Um, I definitely have noticed that ever since I went through puberty, I've needed a lot of privacy. Um, I usually like to close my door when I get changed. Um, even though, um, even though you guys are my family, um, I am kind of self-conscious of, um, like, when we go swimming, I always try and wear, like, two pieces, but that they cover my stomach. I'm kind of con self-conscious of that. Um, so I don't entirely... I definitely think that I have wanted a lot more privacy um, that went, ever since I went through puberty, so... How about the amount of attention that you devote to your personal appearance? Do you find that you're more conscious of now granted we don't go out very often because of the current conditions we're under but occasionally you go out to the store or whatever it is do you find that you're more cognizant of how you look before you present yourself to other people at this point more than ever um kind of yeah um there was actually one time where we went to the supermarket and most of my winter clothes are like black are like dark colors, but my winter boots are white, light gray, and pink. And I was kind of like worried about it. Like I was kind of worried about wearing them because they were just such a, they just stuck out of my, stuck, basically they were, they were eye catching when compared to the rest of my outfit. So I was kind of, I was kind of worried about that as for getting ready. Um, I try to keep good personal hygiene at home, but I always make sure that I have my hair um, brushed um, when we do the podcast and when we go out um, so that I don't look like a mess. Well, that's good. I'm sure your viewing public appreciates that. Yeah. 
Um, what about gender definition? Um, you generally are not a very, I don't know the word to describe, frou-frou. You know, you don't like to wear dresses and dress all in, in, in outwardly feminine, traditionally feminine style dress. You're much more casual. You prefer pants over dresses. Do you have any anxiety about your gender definition when it comes to your appearance? I mean, not really. Um, I don't entirely like wearing um, feminine outfits and, well, traditionally feminine outfits. And originally, especially when I was younger, mommy would like dressing me up in outfit, in those kinds of outfits, especially on picture days. And I never entirely liked wearing them. They were just never comfortable for me. Um, they would, I never really liked either. I don't even like having my hair down most of the time, which is why I usually have it tied back. Right. Um, and it actually took me until a little re, a couple of years ago to finally admit to mommy, hey, I don't really like wearing formal, f- traditionally feminine dresses. I don't like wearing dresses, skirts, or anything really entirely fancy. Could I please just wear some casual stuff? And so far, it's been good. My last picture day, I was wearing, I think I actually wore a space cat shirt. Now, that's more, <clears throat> for you, it's more for comfort than it is for fashion sense more than anything. Is that fair to say? Yeah, pretty much. But for the most part, I do have my outfits kind of representing something I like. Um, but I can just wear, I just like wearing t-shirts overall. Fair enough. So all in all, <clears throat> all those things considered, do you think you suffer from body anxiety? Mm-hmm. I mean, to a certain extent, yes. I don't entirely, I, I think it definitely comes, it's definitely from the privacy aspect of it and, um, And, like, that aspect of it, I definitely think that has a bit... I have a bit of body anxiety for that. But for gender expression, I don't really think I have a problem. Okay, good. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was physical appearance concerns. As a child, we're mostly unselfconscious of personal looks. With the onset of puberty and adolescence, appearance becomes a primary concern. There's an increased preoccupation with managing one's looks because they can affect how one is identified, how one is treated, how one fits in, and how one belongs to popular groups. Now, right now, with the pandemic and isolation, a lot of these things really don't have as much of an effect right now because you're not directly interacting with peers. Mm -hmm. But let's think back you know, a little over a year ago when you were going to school and interacting with people, how much did your physical appearance affect how you were treated in school and how others viewed you? I mean, I definitely wasn't popular. I wasn't too well known. Um, I wasn't like well known in the sense that like people actually wanted to hang out with me. I was kind of well known though for my name because a lot of the kids who went to my school, I went to, I had classes with. So they kind of knew my name from that, but I wasn't really popular on a major level. And I don't really think my looks had too much to do with it. Um, I know that some people, like, especially during picture days with people who knew I used to wear my hair down and um, wear a dress. Like, I'm pretty sure if I went into school wearing a dress and had my hair down, everyone, pretty much people who knew me would be kind of shocked because they wouldn't really know that I looked like that. Right. So the media, our peers, and pop culture can set up an artificially idealized model of attractiveness and beauty that influence teen self-image and concern about physical appearances. Kids often resort to comparing themselves to that idealized image of beauty, which are more often than not fiction and not at all a representation of reality. As a result, teens feel bad because they don't measure up to these artificially established standards. Some of the adverse side effects of this struggle include weight struggles and eating disorders, depression, bullying, 
and the use of body-enhancing substances. So with that in mind, do you hold yourself up to any of these um, body images that we see depicted in the media or through celebrities or typical channels for role models? Is that something that you hold up to or is your look your own? Do you do you own your look and, and not have it influenced by others? Well, I will be honest, when I was younger, I kind of had that. But then later on, I kind of realized that all that stuff is completely unrealistic. And in fact, I actually watched a video in Skills where it said that a lot of advertisements are fully edited to get rid of blemishes and make them look like the idealized version of perfect and perfection. And honestly, learning of all this, I know I'm never going to look like that and I'm not going to try to look like that. I'm just going to try and stay healthy and make sure that I um, am okay with my body. And I think that's that's probably the healthiest approach that you could have regarding this. Um, I mean, you see things, a lot of, a lot of uh, things take heat, like uh, Barbie dolls, for instance, where the Barbie dolls are present this unrealistic, idealized physical appearance of what, you know, the female body should look like. And it, if you looked like that, you would probably be suffering from several different eating disorders in order to look like that. Yeah. But are there, is there anyone out there that you see in the celebrity universe that you think might embody what you want to look like or what, how you want to be perceived? Well, it's kind of difficult because not many people who are shown in the media are shown to have, to not have this idealized body. Um, not many are considered to have body weight, and many are considered to be shown as kind of skinny and this kind of body that um, we basically painted as what you should be looking like or what is or what the perfect ideal is. And it is kind of hard to find people who are shown that aren't overly obese that are just, you know, regular people. Yeah, that's a very good point. Very good point. Very astute observation. So let's take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some fashion considerations and physical self-evaluation and a few more things. Alrighty. We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back. We are talking body anxiety today. So let's talk fashion considerations. So dressing according to fashion becomes more important to keep up with and fit in with friends. A teen may complain they have nothing to wear while the parents complain about a closet full of clothes that fit just fine. Parents fail to understand that, quote, fit isn't just a physical issue. It's a fashionable one. Is that something that you would agree with? I mean, yeah. Um, while it doesn't entirely relate to me personally, I do know that looking, um, that a lot of teens worry about looking fashionable. And just because something fits doesn't mean it, they, doesn't mean it's good for, they feel it's good for them to wear. That's a very good point. 
Dressing for a secure, comfortable, and confident physical appearance counts for a lot. A wardrobe that is in perfectly good condition but is last year's fashion may no longer be suitable to wear at schools or around friends. Now, again, under the current circumstances, I think we can pretty much throw fashion out the window since there's no socializing right now. But under normal circumstances, do you feel that it's important for you to update your wardrobe every year for school so that you're wearing, and, and even during school, so that you're wearing fashions that are the current trend so that you fit in better? Do you think it helps you fit in better or, or be more confident and comfortable with your peers? Well, I will be honest. There are a lot of um, girl outfits that are shown to be popular that I would I know that I know look nice, but I'd never be comfortable with. Like one of them used to be ripped jeans, and I wasn't entirely sure how I'd feel with ripped jeans. Um, and when I first try, and it took me a while until I ended up trying them out, and I ended up liking them. Um, but there were a lot of other outfits that, like, they look nice, but I don't think I'd ever really feel comfortable with them. Um, I really just wear, like, I'm so used to wearing t-shirts at this point that at one point when I was cleaning out my wardrobe and I had some of my old tank tops, when I put them on and, f and, like, I could, I could physically feel the change and it was the strangest thing. So how important is fashion to you right now? Um, definitely not the most important thing. I have the clothes that I like and the clothes that I don't like, and I really don't try to uh, be up with the times. Um, every once in a while, every, every year or so, me and Mommy would go out for other clothes, typically to get um, shorts, pants, or even some t-shirts. Um, and I really don't try to wear the fashionable outfits. I don't entirely concern that. Like, I mainly just concern about the type of t sh the type of logo my t-shirt has. Like, if there's a funny kind of logo that I think, like, represents me, I would wear it. That makes sense. I understand that. As a kid growing up, um, I grew up I think we've talked about this in the past. My parents didn't have a lot of money. My dad didn't make a lot of money. So when I would go out shopping for clothes, it was more for the necessity of clothes than it was for the fashion of clothes. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I wasn't always wearing the latest and greatest. You know, I wasn't wearing name brand stuff or, you know, any designer stuff or anything like that. And, you know, I did, kids didn't make fun of me. Um, and that was mainly because I was probably the, the biggest kid in the class and, you know, you're not really smart if you make fun of the biggest, toughest kid in class. So hmm. I, I kind of got a pass on that, but I, I did see that other, you know, kids can be cruel and they'll find things to pick on. And if it's not your fashion that they're going to pick on you for, if they don't like you, they'll find something else to pick on you for. Um, but you know, sometimes the fashion and the clothes that you wear tend to be, Tend to paint a target on your back. Yeah. So let's talk physical evaluation. Puberty increases the severity of physical evaluation. The body changes so rapidly during this time that each morning you wake up, you feel as though your body has changed since the day before. A new facial blemish may appear, a new pimple. Maybe you can't get your hair the way you want it. Maybe you look like you've got put pounds on overnight. You may look exactly the same as the day before, but now you don't like the way you look. Have you experienced that type of thing where you see your body changing so rapidly or not even see it changing, you perceive it changing so rapidly that you may feel different from day to day? Um, I definitely think I have that with pimples um, because sometimes, like, as long as they're not entirely an inconvenience to me, I won't entirely notice them changing. But if they are kind of an inconvenience, I notice that. Um, one of the big problems I always have is that my hair always gets messed up, and it's always annoying to try and brush it out. Sometimes it's easy to brush it out, but actually today it was kind of harder to brush it out. 
I understand. But even the most supportive and understanding parents can't help a teen's self-image in many cases because it's not the options of the parents, uh, I'm sorry, it's not the opinions of the parents that matter most, it's the opinions of peers. How, and again, thinking back to before quarantine, how much were the opinions of your peers a concern to you? And how often were those opinions expressed to you in ways that made you be a little more self-conscious, maybe? Well, I will be honest. None of them actually really made fun of my outfit most of the time. I again, I wasn't really the most social child. Um, I had my group of friends, and really kids didn't entirely, you know, like, talk to me. There were some times where, especially at gym, uh, some of the girls would um, comment about something and I'd kind of get annoyed. But it was never really on my fashion standpoint. Um, so I wasn't entirely... It never really bothered me in that respects. Um, but um, I can... But... Um, I did want to at least kind of blend into the crowd. I didn't want to be, a, like, stick out in a good or bad way. I just kind of wanted to blend in, which is kind of why I just wear, I just wore regular clothes. No one really commented on, on, on like, okay, why don't you wear a dress or something? Like, they never did that. Um, but it, and my fashion choice, and actually, my fashion choice did end up getting me out of social interaction of social gatherings, specifically the dances, um, because they recommended formal outfits, and since I never really liked wearing formal outfits, I didn't go because I wasn't going to be forced to wear something I didn't want to wear, so I guess it kind of affected how I interacted with others and their opinions. I mean, yeah, I kind of took some of them to heart, um... And like you normally said, their opinions shouldn't matter, and I won't really know any of them later on in life. Um, but it was still always kind of hard to ignore others' opinions of you, especially if they're negative. That, that is true. When, when they're in your face like that, it's difficult to, uh, to not have it affect you in some way. That brings us to social expectations and combating social expectations. Not all teens mature at the same rate. We know that, for instance, boys mature at a slower rate than girls do. Girls tend to mature much younger than boys do. Mm -hmm. Some progress faster through puberty than others, even in the same gender. Some may feel left behind as their friends' bodies change faster than their own. If one is 14 but appears 12-looking, they look much younger, and result the result can be that they're discounted or pushed around because they don't look like they're maturing as fast as, as their other peers. But if one is 14 and a peer 16, they look advanced for their age. They can result in pressure to act more mature than they're ready for as well. Having started puberty at a relatively young age of nine, you've matured a little bit faster than some of your, your peers have. Uh, and certainly some mature faster than some of your friends because a lot of your friends are, are a little younger than you. Do you feel like you've had any kind of pressure or anything put on you to act or behave at a different age than you're comfortable with at this point? I mean, there's always been this kind of thing resonating with me that I didn't exactly look my age. Like, like, in my normal look, I feel as though I'm younger. I feel as though I look younger than, uh, 14. And, um, and sometimes, and, like, whenever I have my hair down, you guys know, you always say I look much more mature than 14. Um, and the thing is, I never really feel, I never entirely feel like I'm 14. Like, Looking at myself now, I would say I'm either 12 or 13 because it just, I just appear that way. And that's kind of what got me thinking. Like, I've never seen, like, it seems like all the older kids, when I look at them, 
Like, I never really look like them when I am their age. They always look older than me. And I think that's just because they're getting older, or it's just because there's no real definition for how you look at 14 years old. Everyone, every 14 year old looks different, and there's no specific body looking. There's no specific body type for the ages of, tw- of 12. Well, of the ages when you're going through puberty because so many people change at such a, at different rates. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. You know, sometimes a young woman will cloak herself in bulky clothes to conceal her maturing body because she's not ready for the attention that this appearance, uh, appearance change can bring. And it can be further difficult for mature looking adolescents to resist the attention of older peers who invite him or her to act that older age as well. So that can cause some uh, uncomfortable social interactions. Viewed as older than you are, peers and adults can make unrealistic assumptions about you and what you want and have experienced uh, based on your looks. So someone may look at you, think that you're older, and expect you to act older or perform higher in school or, or whatever it is. Uh, when you start looking sexually mature, there can be a social expectation that you are inclined to act that way as well. So that's kind of the that dangerous, slippery slope that we talk about where if you start looking older than you really are, socially you may be pressured into acting that way, and and that can lead to difficult situations. Do you find that your teachers and adults around you treat you the same age that you are, or do they treat you like you're younger or older or some variance thereof? I mean, I do feel that most of my teachers do respect me for my age, especially since I'm a decently smart student. So I think they know that I'm not entirely sure if they treat me if I'm older or if I'm younger. I don't think they treat me when I'm younger. I'm not sure if they treat me the age I am or if I'm, if, or that, that I'm older. It does seem as though I'm getting a lot more responsibilities though, um, because, um, I guess due to the fact that I am kind of smart, I think that kind of pushes me over the limit of being 14 and maybe being slightly older because I've definitely been not, been getting a lot of responsibilities, especially now that I'm going to be moving into the high school. So, um, I guess there is that kind of middle ground where they don't treat me like I'm extreme, like I'm old, like I'm a year older, but they don't entirely treat me like I'm 14 either. There's some middle ground that is where they treat me. Now, do you think that, that, differentiation in how they treat you is a result of your physical appearance or a result of how you conduct yourself in their presence? Like, do you act more mature? Well, I definitely think as compared to some of the other kids, um, I definitely think I act a lot more mature. I've noticed that kids my age can't seem to be quiet a lot and that's nothing against them um it's just they have pretty low attention spans and i can understand that um but i'm one of those kids who just stays quiet and just you know make sure to pay attention to the lesson although i also never really try to answer questions i'm just kind of the quiet kid understandable Uh, Let's take another break and we'll come back and give some hints on how parents can help teens who go through body anxiety. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. 
we'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to our discussion on teens and body anxiety today. So we've talked about, you know, what our physical appearance means to us and, and how others perceive us and some of the difficulties that looking older or younger than you actually are can cause. But let's talk to the parents briefly here. And I'm going to run down this list and I want you to grade how mommy and daddy fair with some of these hints here and whether or not we're we're doing what we should be doing okay so on a scale of one to ten one being bad and ten being great that works that's our typical scale so the first one they talk about is explain physical changes that can come with puberty so the young person knows what alterations to normally expect how have we done with that and and how do you feel about how you're dealing with it. I'd say I'd do a 9.5 only because I learned a lot of that from school, but you guys have always um, provided me with as many answers as you could. Okay, good. Uh, that's reassuring. So the next one is respect the importance of looks and how appearance now socially matters more. How, have we done a good job setting you up with that? Um... Yeah, I'd say I'd probably give you a 10 on this one because um you have shown you've told me that I'm not going to look perfect, but that's okay. Okay, good. Understand the fashionable look the young person is adopting and what it signifies. Now, I think we struggled a little bit with this, especially when we came to some of the school pictures, but I, I think we might be doing a little bit better. What's your opinion? Yeah, I'd say a nine at this point because now you're still, you're still trying to understand my whole. I'm, in fact, I'm still trying to like understand mainly formal wear for me. Um, but you guys have definitely done better with understanding how I want to look fashionably, fashionably. Give adequate privacy for the young person to have the time it takes to get used to their changing body. Uh, I think this has improved significantly since we moved you into the new room, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, you guys have definitely been giving me um, the privacy I need, uh, and I appreciate it, so I'll give you a 10. Oh, well, thanks. That's very generous of you. No problem. Never tease about looks because they're, they are no laughing matter. I tease about a lot of things. Do I tease you about your looks? Aside from having this urge to pop pimples from time to time? Yeah, I'll give you a 9.5 for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they also say never criticize looks because that attacks self-esteem. Do we criticize how you look? Not really. I don't think so. I'll give you a 10 for not criticizing me. Oh, we'll see. You're very generous today. Thank you. Uh, tolerate changes in self-presentation through appearance because that's part of an individual's experimentation. Do you do you think you experiment a lot with your looks? Um, not really. There's very few times that I actually do experiment with it. So can't exactly give you a grade on that because mm, I don't really go through that. That's a fair point. Monitor bodily changes sought to improve personal appearance like dieting. Because in the extreme, damage can be done. So how, how are mommy and daddy, uh, are we intrusive when it comes to your eating habits and how you conduct yourself for uh, physical fitness and stuff like that? Or, or are we just enough intrusive? What do you think? I definitely, th I don't think like you're too intrusive on my eating habits for the most part. Mommy definitely tries to make sure I have a good variety as well as being healthy, so I appreciate her doing that. Um, for exercise, we have Just Dance now, so 
Um, I'm definitely getting in more exercise than I did before, so I'll give you got. Hmm. I'll give you guys a nine for that. Okay. That's pretty good. That's an A, right? That's yeah. for us, yeah. Uh, nurture personal valuing separate and independent of looks because that creates other pillars of self-esteem. So do mommy and I guess the, the real question here is do mommy and daddy value you for for what you look like or how you conduct yourself as a person? You guys value me for how I conduct myself, and if anything ever does come up about my looks, you guys are always there to help. Like, Mommy and I, like, Mommy had actually tried desperately to find me a good bathing suit that I'd feel comfortable with. Um, and I definitely think you guys don't value me for my looks only. You value me as a whole person, so I'll give you a 10 for that. Yeah, I mean, you know... For our viewing audience out there, you you see how I dress for these podcasts, and you know I I'm very casual in dress, so I'm not overly concerned about what people think about how I look. So for me, it it would be hypocritical if I impose that kind of uh, criticism on somebody else if I wasn't you know concerned about it myself. Yeah. Uh, what do we have next? Uh, confront cruel self deprecation. Based on looks, because that constitutes mistreatment of self. So, do we do we tolerate it when you make fun of your own appearance? Do we encourage you? Do we go along with it? What's our reaction? Well, if I ever do make some joke about my looks, which doesn't happen very often, due to your tendencies of making fun of us, you might go along with it. Um, but if I tell you it's a serious matter, you make sure to stay serious, so I'll give you a 9.5 for that. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm big on self-deprecating humor. I like making fun of other people too much, and if you can't make fun of yourself, you shouldn't make fun of other people. And because I like making fun of other people, I make fun of myself all the time. Uh, encourage acceptance of physical imperfections because the ideal is not real. How do we handle that? Well, you definitely um don't exa- you definitely say I need to clean my su- my face more because of the pimples and I can totally understand that. Um you also say that um I've also heard you tell me that it's better to have a little more body fat because especially if you went without food, having some extra body fat could keep you alive. So you kind of you got to go to the extremes when doing that, but you okay. also you also make sure that I don't compare myself to um the ideal and um and you know my mindset on that, so I'll give you a ten. So we're we're going for the uh, zombie apocalypse or stuck on a desert <laughs> island approach. There, I got you. Uh, share your own history of issues with personal appearance, so the adolescent knows the parent had this struggle too. Now, I think given the nature of the podcast, it's fairly clear that I tend to overshare. You know, some of the struggles that I had as a teen. But do you feel like you get that kind of feedback from mommy as well? Uh, kind of. Normally when I do have, when I am going through these issues, she talks about um, what she went through. Especially since she's also um, a girl like me. Uh, she knows that she I... She is? You've noticed that, huh? <laughs> Anyway, since she is a girl, she's able to relate to me a bit more than you normally um, do. So um, when I am going through these problems, she always makes sure to relate her. She always makes sure to relate it to her to what she went through. And even if she can't, she always tries to make sure that she knows that I'm not the only one going through it. And that's important because, you know, misery loves company. Yeah. Uh, and the last one that we have here is see if you can help your teenager avoid equating personal worth with physical looks. Uh, do you think your self-worth has anything to do with your physical appearance? Nope. Um, thanks to you guys. You always tell me that um, I think it it partially has to do with your encouragement of my intellect and my creativity 
Um, and when I am going through these personal challenges, you just make sure that I get through it. You don't ever really praise me for looking decent or any, you just, well, you praise me as long as I, you know, stay clean. Um. <laughs> Not even going to read into that one. Okay. We'll just, we'll just stop it there. <laughs> um, that was it for what we had here. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing thoughts and shout outs if you have any. Okay. Go for your closing remarks. Okay, so to anyone out there who is suffering um, from body anxiety, just know that you should never, you should never think the way you look defines you as a person. You have, you have so many other qualities about you that make you who you are, and the ideal that we have in society is not realistic in the slightest, and you shouldn't compare yourself to anyone. Okay. I think that's uh, sage advice like usual. Thank you. Before we go, I would encourage folks to uh, subscribe to the podcast. You can get our audio versions listed as Insights into Teens on pretty much any place you can get podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, uh, Amazon, Google, etc., etc., uh, I would also suggest you check out our video versions of our podcasts, all listed on the same sites. You can find those listed under Insights into Things, and that is all of our shows, not just Insights into Teens. Uh, I would also encourage people to reach out to us, give us your feedback, give us your suggestions for topics. If there's something out there you'd like us to uh, research and talk about on the show, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can also get high res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream on Twitch six days a week at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon prime subscriber, you do get a monthly uh, Twitch prime subscription that you can throw our way. We'd appreciate that. You could get audio versions of the podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. On Facebook, you can give us feedback at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast, or you can get links to all those things on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Well done. And I think that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.